Would you pray with me? Father, we are grateful that we have not had to earn our salvation because we could not. We are grateful that everything we are able to do, even the salvation that we experience, is not of ourselves, but it is of Christ. Lord, right now we enter a time where we open your word, where we seek to see you clearly, see how we ought to live as your church clearly, who we are as your church clearly. Help us to do that. Help us to see clearly. Help us to know who we are in you, who you have called us to be, how we are to live in light of it. Father, be with me as I bring your word, as I seek to preach it, to preach it faithfully in truth and in your spirit, not my own flesh and power, because that is worthless. It is all of you that anything good is accomplished. So Lord, we pray now in this time that you would help me and help us to understand rightly who we are. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. I'm going to be honest, this is kind of a set up for next week sermon. <laughs> this, is, this is a sermon that will help us get in the right mindset for next week and the following weeks as we discuss some difficult topics that come up in 1 Corinthians, such as church discipline and other things. But if we are to rightly understand church discipline, we need to first understand rightly our identity. And so I ask the question, does it matter how we understand our identity as Emmanuel Baptist Church? Does it does it matter? And my answer, and hopefully at the end of this, your answer will also be yes, it absolutely matters. Because what we believe our identity to be as Emmanuel Baptist Church will directly impact how we function and how we live as God's church. For instance, if we understood our identity to be a social club, it's not, but if we understood it that way, then every action we make will be done in light of that identity. We will merely meet on Sunday mornings, Wednesday evenings, whatever else we do, to merely socialize. This will be social hour. We will plan events for our own entertainment. We will organize our groups around hobbies and interests alone. We will spend the funds we have only on things that benefit us in the here and now and not plan for the future or for things that will help others around the community and world. If that's how we see ourselves as merely a social club, then every action we take will follow in line with that. This question is important. It matters what we understand our identity as Emmanuel Baptist Church to be because when we understand our identity rightly, we will be faced with the reality that we can't just do the easy things. We can't just do the simple things, the things that are nice and neat. Next week again, in fact, and for many weeks following, we are going to discuss difficult topics that will not make sense to us if we don't rightly understand who we are. Next week, when we look at church discipline, it will only seem right and make sense if we understand our identity rightly. Likewise, the following weeks, when we see how we are to handle things like lawsuits among believers, sexual immorality, marriage and singleness, food offered to idols, idolatry in general, how we approach the Lord's Supper, spiritual gifts in the church, love, living in light of the resurrection, giving to those in need, all of those things are affected by what we understand our identity to be. So what then is our identity as Emmanuel Baptist Church? Luckily, I don't have to come up with this. God has already told us in his word what our identity is. And so we're going to see only from 1 Corinthians this morning, because that's where our argument's going to go for the next however many weeks. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians, 
And Paul has already multiple times brought before us, it hasn't been the main point, but he's already brought in these instances of this is who you are. This is who the Corinthian church is, and likewise who Emmanuel Baptist Church ought to be and is. So our identity as Emmanuel Baptist Church is not a social club. We are far greater than that. First, according to God and working through the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians, our identity is God's possession. We are God's possession. If we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses Verse 2, we read this, to the church of God at Corinth, and we'll stop there. We'll read the rest in a little bit, but we'll just stop there. To the church of God at Corinth, and then if you turn a page or two to 1 Corinthians 3.23, we read this, you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. It is abundantly clear here, based on these two verses, that the Corinthian church was not the possession of Paul. It was not Paul's church. It was not the possession of their current elders. It was not even the possession of the members themselves. It was not their church. It was the church of God at Corinth. The one who possessed the church, who owned the church, who made up all the believers there, was God Almighty Himself. Paul stated it, stated it again in a very different way in the second verse I read. So he started out with, to the church of God at Corinth. Then he went on in the second verse we read, and he said, all those believers who made up the church of God at Corinth belong to Christ. They belong to Him the one who died for them, the one who redeemed them from the domain of darkness and brought them into the kingdom of the Son, the one who was raised to life in order to give them new life, the one who was purchased, who purchased them by His blood. They are Christ's possession, and Christ belongs to God. The church in Corinth was God's possession from the beginning. It has always been his possession. It always was his possession. And likewise, Emmanuel Baptist Church is God's. We are not our own. We were bought with a price. We don't belong to ourselves. We don't belong to me. We don't belong to anyone other than God Almighty. We are his possession. That is our identity. And this reality impacts every decision we make, which means those hard texts we're about to get into are important. They must be understood and they must be lived out. We must be a church that exercises church discipline and treats marriage and singleness appropriately and seeks to view spiritual gifts rightly because we are God's. And he has told us how we ought to approach those things. We are God's possession. That is our identity. But that's not all we must understand regarding our identity as Emmanuel Baptist Church. We must also understand that we are made up of those sanctified and called as saints. That first verse we read, chapter 1, verse 2, we'll read the rest of it now. To the church of God at Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called as saints. The church of God at Corinth was made up. Who made it up was those and only those who were sanctified in Christ Jesus and called as saints. In other words, only those who believed in Christ Jesus and his atoning work on the cross and in his resurrection and who confessed him as their Lord and obeyed him in baptism were a part of the church of God at Corinth. That was who made it up. For anyone among them who failed to believe in Christ or who did not confess him as Lord or who did not follow through in obedience with baptism, they were not a part of the church. This would have been clear to those who were a part of the church, and they would have made it abundantly clear to those who were not a part of the church. You are not one of us yet if you've not done these things. 
There was no ambiguity with it. And where there was, they suffered. The church suffered when it was unclear who should be a part of the church and who should not be a part of the church. Hence the reason Paul writes about church discipline. We need to make it clear who is and who is not a part of the church of God at Corinth. Because again, only those who had been sanctified and called as saints were a part of the church. Which makes sense when we think about point one again. If the church is God's possession, then it ought to be made up only of those who were God's people, redeemed by Christ. If they had not been redeemed, then they were not God's people and therefore were not God's church in possession. Church, just as we as Emmanuel Baptist are God's possession like the church of God at Corinth, we are also to be made up of the same people, only those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus and called as saints. They are the only ones who are a part of the church known as Emmanuel Baptist. This understanding of church membership is one of the Baptist distinctives known as regenerate church membership. Regenerate church membership is the understanding that the members of the local church are made up of those who have been regenerated by the Spirit through faith in Christ and who have walked in obedience displayed through baptism. This is a hallmark of the Baptist church. This ought to be a hallmark of Emmanuel Baptist because it is a hallmark of the Scriptures. Now, this doesn't mean that those who are not currently members of Emmanuel Baptist Church are not welcome here because they certainly are, and we are so glad that they are here. It simply means that we understand that they are not a part of those who officially constitute and make up Emmanuel Baptist Church. And if that's you this morning, I want you to know and hear this in a loving way. We would love for you to become a member at some point. Maybe today, maybe next week, maybe in the months to come. But we would love to have you here for you to come and express your interest in becoming a part of Emmanuel Baptist Church. But until then, we must be clear and upfront on who the church is currently, according to the scriptures. That it is those who have committed to Christ and who have committed to the church. This issue is paramount, again, when we consider next week and church discipline. We are not expected to, nor should we carry out church discipline on those who are not a part of the church. We aren't expected as God's possession and God's people to say to those who are not a part of the church, hey, you ought to act like the church because they're not yet a part of the church. We're not expected to do that. But on the other side, we are expected to and should carry out church discipline when necessary on those who are are a part of the church, but that can only happen when we know who is and is not a member of Emmanuel Baptist Church. We have to be clear about it. And the last thing we must remember regarding our identity as Emmanuel Baptist Church is that we are God's holy temple. We are God's holy temple. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 16 and 17. Don't you yourselves know that you are God's temple and that the Spirit of God lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy and that is what you are. This verse, I believe, has been taken out of context a bit and has been used merely as an individual reality. As in, don't do drugs because don't you know that your body is a temple? We've probably heard that a time or two. And it's not necessarily untrue, 
If you are a believer, you have the Holy Spirit within you, which makes you a temple of the Holy Spirit. But these verses in particular were not written to individuals, but to a church body, to the church of God at Corinth. They all together made up God's holy temple. So what did this mean, though, when Paul wrote this? And and why did it matter? First, it meant that the Corinthian church and all her members collectively were to be holy. They were to be distinct from the world. They were to be morally pure and unstained by the fallenness of the world they resided in because in Christ they were made new. This was something they struggled with greatly. Again, why Paul is writing this letter to them. Holiness is a big issue in 1 Corinthians. They struggled with it. They were forgetting their identity, and it led to them being infected by the ways of the world, shown in how they were living unholy lives, and some of them were in need of church discipline and and being turned back to the Lord. That's what it meant. And it mattered then because When the world looked at them, when the world around them looked at them and their representation of what it was like to be a Christ follower and part of the church, they didn't see the redeemed life and people they should have seen. Instead, they saw people just like them, living just like them, as if nothing had happened and Christ changed nothing. They weren't living as God's holy temple. Church, we are God's possession. We are those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called as saints or the holy ones. And we must act like it. We must remember that we too are God's holy temple. Yes, individually we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But more importantly, collectively, as Emmanuel Baptist Church, we are the temple of God Almighty here on earth. We have been redeemed and called to be in the world, but not of the world. We are to be distinct from the world now. We are to be morally pure and unstained by the ways of the world. We don't say, oh, well, this is okay. You know, I know that you know, this is kind of a gray area and, and may even not be so gray and against the scriptures, but I'm pretty good on everything else. So I can be all right here. But that's not what we are called to be as God's people and God's church. We are to be completely and utterly distinct and pure and unstained. We have been made new in Christ. We are not the old person anymore who lived according to the ways of the world and the wisdom of the world. We are new in Christ, and we do what Christ has called us to do. We are to be holy as God is holy. We are called to be a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. We want the world to look at us, which sounds funny. I get it. We, usually when the world looks at us, they call us names and they hate us. But we want them to look at us. We want them to say, look at us, look at our life, look how we're living, so that we can show them what it looks like to follow Christ, how glorious it is, how amazing it is, what it means to be a redeemed people. They see that when they look at the church, or they should see that when they look at the church. They should see people different than them, noticeably different, marginally different. When they look at us, they should see what it means to be a chosen race, a holy nation, a holy priesthood. We are God's possession. We are God's people. We were called and sanctified in Christ Jesus to be like Christ. So I'll ask again, does it matter how we understand our identity as Emmanuel Baptist Church? Hopefully, your answer is yes. Yes, it matters. 
Our understanding of our identity as Emmanuel Baptist Church directly impacts how we function and live as a church. It is foolish to think we can have this vague identity out there that we can make up who we want to be as Emmanuel Baptist Church and then live rightly. That's foolish. We have to understand who we are, who God has created us to be, called us to be, so that we can live rightly, live a holy life, be God's holy temple. We are not a social club. We don't only do the easy things, even though it is tempting. It's tempting to let sin slide. It's tempting to say, I don't want to have a hard conversation because it's awkward. They might not like it. It's tempting, but it's not right. We are instead God's possession. We are made up of those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called as saints who make up God's holy temple. And as such, we do the hard things. We discuss the difficult topics. Trust me, if it were up to me, I would just go ahead and skip chapter 5. I would much rather talk about the lawsuits among believers than church discipline. But I can't do that. Because God said, here is my word. It is profitable for you to build you up, to make you complete and equipped for every good work. All of it from front to back. You can't skip it. You can't say, I don't like that part. It's there for us for a reason, to make us holy. We discuss the difficult topics. We seek to carry out what the Word calls us to do, even when it's uncomfortable, and the world says that we are out of touch. Because guess what? We are out of touch with the world, and that's okay. We should be out of touch with the world. We should be so far distinct from the world that the world, how many of you like Brussels sprouts? More than I thought. That was a wrong, bad example. (laughs) We're going to run with it anyway. (laughs) Pretend you don't like Brussels sprouts. If you tasted Brussels sprouts and you know, or I'll change it, liver, is that better? A few of you. Danny likes it too. I don't get it. But <laughs> when you bite into liver and you don't like it like normal people, <laughs> it is off-putting. It, it is, why would you ever want to eat that? <laughs> Why, but that's how the world ought to be for the church. That when we go out into the world and we try to start living like the world and we say, well, I, I'm kind of fine here. You know, this isn't too bad. We should just get that awful taste in our mouth. We should say, no, that's disgusting. Why would you ever put that in front of me? We are God's possession He has called us to do and be very specific things. So we are out of touch with the world. We are merely foreigners here, waiting on our true king to return and establish our eternal home, the new Jerusalem. But that's not here yet. And until that day comes, we keep pressing forward, We keep striving to live in light of our identity as Emmanuel Baptist Church. We want to understand our identity and to be faithful to who God has called us to be. Again, even when it's hard, even when it's inconvenient and uncomfortable, we do it anyway because that's who we are. We are Emmanuel Baptist Church, we are God's possession. We are made up of those sanctified and called as saints in Christ Jesus, and we are to be God's holy temple. All of us together, not a select few, not just the pastor, not just the worship leaders, not just the deacons, not just the Sunday school teachers, every individual member together is to be those things because that's our identity. So if you are a part of Emmanuel Baptist Church, 
Let's make sure we line up with it and we carry out the things we're supposed to do. Would you pray with me? God, we are grateful for your word. We are grateful for the truth of our identity in you. We are grateful that it is not up to us to come up with who we are, to come up with some catchy slogan or idea, but that we can just say we are God's church. We are God's possession. We are sanctified in Christ Jesus. We are God's holy temple. That is who we are. Lord, help us to live in light of it. Help us to live true to that identity. Help us to to know and to believe right and true things. Help us to know and carry out right and true practices because we want to be faithful to you as you have been faithful to us. And help us, Lord, to be that city on a hill that is not hidden but is shown to be distinct but not just distinct, but beautiful and glorious and attractive to those in the world so that they will see that they need Christ just as we have seen how we need him and that they will come to believe in him as Lord as we believe in him as Lord. They will seek to obey him as Lord as we seek to obey him as Lord. And God, if there is someone here this morning who doesn't know you, who's never confessed you as Lord, who hasn't believed your gospel, let them do so today. Let them say, I know that I need Jesus, the Jesus who died for me, who rose again, who conquered death and sin on my behalf, and I want that gift of salvation. Let them come forward, let them say it loudly, let them say it proudly, and let us rejoice in that. And God, if there is someone here this morning who does not have a church family, who is not a part of God's church, who is not officially a part of God's holy temple known as the local church, may they be led this morning to join here, to say, I know I need this. I know the scriptures show me my need for the church. And let us welcome them in with open arms, celebrating that there is yet another stone added here where we can walk together hand in hand, glorifying our God and Savior. God, we love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.